Before we start shading our character, we need to set up a nice lightning that will allow us to create shaders that will work in every kind of lightning. So some kind of PBR based lightning. So I will first add a camera into my scene. Press zero to go into camera view, press G and Z twice to be able to move it on its local Z axis. I will then set its X location to zero so that it's aligned with the 3D view. And I will set its focal length to 60, which will make it less distort. In the rendering size, I will change the value to 1600 and 1080 instead of the standard resolution because we don't need this uh, panoramic view. Then in our 3D view, I will press Shift C to make sure the 3D cursor is at the origin of the document and add an empty plane axe. I will then select the camera, then the empty and press Ctrl P to parent the camera to this empty. With this little trick, I can now rotate my camera view, rotating on its Z axis, the empty. I can now move the empty and the camera on the sixth layer. I will then display this layer and add a mesh UV sphere that I will call tester. Then I will add a subdivision modifier to this sphere and make sure it has a smooth shading. Then I give it a shader, so I create a new one called tester01. Then I will duplicate this sphere and also duplicate its shader and call it tester02. And I will switch the default diffuse BSDF to a glossy BSDF with a roughness of zero. Now in the 3D view, I can press Ctrl B and border this area so that I limit the rendering area and press Shift Z. And I can see the HDR lightning we have set up during the course. If your HDR is not set, it's very simple. I will make sure I'm in cycles. I go into the node editor and I will select the world settings here and click use node. With the node render add-on enabled, I can press Ctrl T to set mappings node and I will open my HDR texture. Now when I go to the 3D view and press Shift Z to enter rendering mode, I can see my HDR in the background and it's lighting this cube. If you don't want, and I generally turn on this option, if you don't want to have the background here, in the rendering settings here, you need to go to film and click transparent here. And now we got rid of the background in this 3D view and also in the camera view and also in the render. Back in our document, I will add a simple plane and give it an emission shader that I will call emitter. Then in the object options, in the cycle setting, I will make sure it doesn't appear to the camera and that it doesn't cast any shadows. I will make sure it has a pure white color and increase its strength to two. Then in the 3D view, I will rotate it in top view so that I can place it in the back of my sphere. This will be our first rim light. You can see the result on the sphere here. And then I will duplicate it and rotate it on its Z axis to create a rim light in the other direction. Uh, make a copy of the shader and push up a little bit its strength to free. So basically we are creating a three point lightning where our HDR will be the key light, the main light if you prefer, and we have two planes 
to create both rim lights and back lights to create those nice edges. Now I will select both planes and also the testers and I will parent everybody to the empty. Back in the 3D view, I will add a new empty single arrow and I will rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees so that it's pointing on the X axis. I will go back into the node editor with the world settings and I will add a single driver that we will select manually create later on the Z rotation of the mapping node. Right clicking on the Z rotation and add driver. Then I will open the graph editor, select drivers instead of F curve. In the right window, I will open the node editor, select world option and select the mapping node. And thus the driver will appear on the left panel in the graph editor. I can press N to open this option panel, select driver and set it to average value. Then I will get rid of the variab and add a new one. I now need to select the object. So this will be the empty we have created, the second one. Then I will switch back to 3D view here, get rid of the rendering mode, give it a proper name as we'll use it to rotate our HDR, I will call it HDR orientation. And then I will right click on its rotation value and click copy arena path. Then I will paste this arena path into the path option and add the suffix dot X with small caps. Now when I rotate it, you can see the value beneath the arena path changing. If you get any error message, just click update dependencies before. Now with the node editor opened, when I rotate my MT on the global Z axis, I can see the value of the mapping changing. And when I zoom on my glossy test sphere and rotate this MT, I can see my HDR rotating also.